let's look at the attendees panel. That's the one where it kind of looks like two people and has the number of the people in the session, in this case three. I click into there, there's quite a bit of information in here. Firstly, it lists who's in the room. Hopefully yours is a more diverse group than mine, but there's a few things I can do as well. Uh, right beside anyone's name, there's this weird bucket with lines in it. This talks about your experience, which is more or less your connection. Uh, usually I tell people if it says my experience is excellent, I take that with a grain of salt. But if it says anything else, like my experience is poor, I know that means my connection is bad. In that case, a student says I'm getting disconnected regularly or I can barely hear you, the audio keeps cutting out. If I look here, and if their experience was poor, it would also normally talk about audio and video loss and delay. So in that case, if I'm seeing they're losing 10% of their audio and their experience is poor, well, I'm gonna tell them their connection is bad. Can they connect via Ethernet? Can they get closer to their modem? Can they make sure to shut down all the other things, like not be streaming Netflix at the same time? Those kind of things will help. But I can also click the three dots to the right of someone's name and get some things there. I could pin their video. So if I want to make sure that that's the person I'm seeing, I could send a private chat message. As we saw before, that's in the chat area. I could promote them to moderator or presenter if I want them to have a little bit more permission. Moderator is someone who could remove people from the session though, or mute people. So you might just want to make a presenter if you want them presenting files. Captioner would only be if you had a set script and someone to type it out. Now, removing someone from the session is not a permanent kick. It just removes them. If they refresh the page, they can't get back in. But if they shut things down and then come back, they will get back in. But hopefully that's not something you have to deal with. If a student turned on their microphone, I should see a mic symbol appear beside their name. Not only that, but I should see the audio levels rising and falling. This tells me they're transmitting. If they, I can't hear them, it's something on my end. So I'm gonna have to look at my speakers muted, something like that. If I need to, I can mute that student. So I'll mute right here. Of course, if you had say even 40 students in a room, you probably don't wanna scroll through the entire list seeing who do I mute. So you could click the three dots near the top right and mute all, which is potentially useful for some people. And if you want the attendees panel beside, you can so-called detach it, moves it to the side here so you can have chat and attendees panel open at the same time or merge it back in if you need more space. And finally, we saw before when I clicked into the My Status and Settings, there is these feedback, this informal non-verbal cues that you might normally have in a classroom and you might look around and see everyone looks confused or bored. Well, now they can actually give you these indicators. So a student could indicate they're confused and I would see that in the attendees panel. And in fact, if I get my students to do that too, maybe one of them says, oh, they need to go faster. Another one's also gonna be confused, why not? Well, I get a tally at the top. And the nice thing is you can see this purple bar running down. It runs down in about 20 or 30 seconds. So it's not like someone's gonna say they're confused at the beginning of the class and stay that way. At least they'd have to keep marking themselves as confused. So another way of, again, kind of getting an informal read on the room. And there's also the agree, disagree, which might be a quick way to get, hey, does everyone agree we can move on or not?